Welcome back to Cosmoholics Anonymous. I am your favorite mother of two, and my hands are super duper ashy, but that's okay. Today, I am going to be teaching you guys how to blend, girl. I want to make my makeup tutorials educational. I want them to be something that you guys can actually use and not just watch, you know? And so today, I am going to go in on blending, and hopefully, you guys will walk away from this video feeling like you can be hired at Mac or Sephora, okay? <laughs> I didn't bother doing my eyebrows just yet because I want to do them after. So right now, I'm going to prime my face and get started with the application process. As you guys know, in the last video I talked, I went in depth about priming. Today, I'm sticking with the same Fenty foundation, so I'm going to continue using a couple of primers. So let's get into it. The first primer I'll be using is my matte primer by Fenty Beauty. Now this routine in particular is going to... <clears throat> Keep in mind I just got out of the shower so I have washed my face, I have exfoliated, I have moisturized, I have sprayed my face with rose water. So we all know the purpose of primer. If you don't, and you're the type of person that doesn't think you need primer. Girl, I used to think I didn't need primer too. <laughs> but primer is so important because one, it creates a barrier between your skin and the makeup product you use, but also because it allows your makeup to apply to a smooth, even surface. Primer basically changes the texture of your face. So it smooths it to a point where you can apply makeup on it and it will go on evenly. If you don't use primer, your makeup, one, won't last as long, but two, you'll have maybe blotches or patches of face that your foundation is sticking to because you chose not to prime. So I've applied it everywhere and now that I'm content with that, I'm going to go in with my orange corrector. So this is my Makeup Forever Primer in Caramel. I explained why I used this in the last video instead of an orange concealer. What in the Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer? <laughs> what is that on my nose, girl? And to blend this in, I am going to use my fingers. And I'm just lightly patting wherever I've placed it. So this is also a primer. It is not concealer. So when I apply product on top of it, it's not going to move. It sets really nicely onto the skin and also corrects where I need correction. So now that I have applied my orange corrector, I am ready to do my foundation. Today I will be going in with my Fenty Beauty Hydrating Foundation. I am in the shade 400 and it will look quite orange on camera, but don't worry, fear not. <laughs> it's not orange in person. Now, of course, we are focusing on blending, but more specifically, I want to focus on blending our contour because, girl, that is where a lot of people are lost. A lot of people don't know how to properly blend their contour or they don't spend enough time on blending their contour so they end up looking a mess. I'm here to save your face. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna apply my foundation and you don't have to apply a lot of foundation because foundation is not concealer. If you're going for a full coverage look, then you want to use a full coverage foundation or a buildable um, foundation. But if you just want to go for a nice, natural, light look or a lighter feel, you do not need to use a whole heap of foundation. You can simply use just a little bit, okay? You can blend your foundation in with a number of different tools. You can use your fingers as long as your hands are super duper clean, sanitized, you don't want any breakouts, and you don't want any breakouts on your clients either if you're watching this to learn how to apply makeup in general so that you can go into the makeup field. I 
don't think this would be the proper video for that simply because I'm applying it to myself. But it is good to learn on yourself before you even go out and try to put makeup on somebody. So technically it's okay, but whatever. You can use your fingers and your fingers are really nice tools to use. I haven't used my fingers in a long time, but that's because I don't like to get my hands dirty with makeup. So I don't generally use my fingers, but makeup blends really nicely with fingers. The other tool you can use is obviously your beauty blender. And you want to use the back side of your beauty blender, not the pointy side. This side is for a foundation application. The triangular part of the beauty blender is for under eye area and concealer. Now, whatever beauty blender you have makes a difference. And some people don't know that, but I have three different beauty blenders here. I won't be using this one today. It's not wet. Both of these are by the company Beauty Blender. This one is by Givenchy. Now, the thing about it is I actually really, really like this one, but I wouldn't use it for applying my foundation. It is not the right kind of squishy that I'd like. My favorite beauty blender for applying foundation would be these two. They are two different densities when wet. This one is the most dense beauty blender, I think, and I buy it because it doesn't stain. Whereas the pink one and white ones and nude ones, they tend to stain with my darker foundation, so I don't like to buy them, but this one was really cute, so I decided to pick it up. I like to use a bunch of different color beauty blenders, I like to use the original Beauty Blender, which is the pink one, of course, but my favorite is definitely the black one. I use this for everything. And when you're blending out your contour, this one can be a great tool. So keep that in mind that depending on which Beauty Blender you have, it's going to feel different when you're squishing it in your hands. You'll be able to tell the difference. One has more bounce than the other. And so you can use Beauty Blender to do your foundation or you can use a foundation brush. It is all about preference. You don't have to follow whatever you see on a tutorial. If that's what's easier for you, then that's what you do. But for me, I just use what my what I'm feeling like using that day. And today, I feel like using a brush. And so as you saw, I didn't waste any time. I saw, well, girl, I was talking for long, but when I had the foundation on my face, I simply started to pull it and bring it to underneath my jaw because you don't want to miss this area. You wanna pull it and make sure that it's blending right into your neck. So there is foundation on your neck. It's not a lot, but it's enough. And I have on a really thin layer of foundation. I didn't put on too heavy, but I think I need a little bit more, so. I am going to add some more foundation to my face. When blending in your foundation, you want to make sure that you're blending in one direction. If you decide to go horizontally, go horizontally. If you decide to go vertically, go vertically. But my personal preference is on my forehead, I go horizontal. On my cheeks and such, I go vertically because I'm following the shape of my face. And that's what you want to do with your foundation when you're blending it in. You want to follow the shape of your face. You want to follow the natural lines in your face, the natural contours. You don't want to be doing horizontal on this part of your face. It just doesn't really make sense because you need to blend down onto your neck. Foundation is the step that is just to even the skin tone. So you don't need a whole lot of foundation because realistically, you're going to be applying a lot heavier products to your foundation and you don't want to look cakey and think about your end result. Don't think about what you look like in the midst of things. And so once you have your foundation to your desired coverage, you can move on. For me, this is good. I like to bring my mirror like super close to my face to make sure that there's no streaks, especially because I'm using a brush. That is something you have to pay attention to. If you're using a brush that's not the right density to apply your foundation, you will have streak marks or stroke marks on your face and it will set there. And then when you're trying to blend your concealer into it, you're gonna have an issue. So you wanna pay attention to that. And from what I can see on my face, everything looks cohesive, everything is blended nicely. 
it's down on my jaw. It didn't stop here. My husband's always coming home and telling me about makeup he saw where the foundation like stopped here and then this part of the face, the last little bit of jaw wasn't properly blended on somebody. You don't want to be that girl, okay? You don't want my husband <laughs> to see you on the street and come home and tell me about how bad your makeup was blended. For foundation, that is it, okay? I'm ready to move on to concealer and contouring. Today I'm actually going to be contouring first, which is generally not what I do, but for blending or teaching how to properly blend, I wanted to do this. And I also am using a shade that I don't normally contour with, but that's because I want to show you how to blend it because sometimes we purchase the wrong shade. It can still work for you because I've literally seen uh, people that are a lot lighter than me, <laughs> they're not the same race, <laughs> using shades as dark as this to contour, but they spend the time to blend it. That is the key spending the time to blend. I'll be using my MAC 24 Hour Studio Fix Concealer in the shade NW53. So I'm not really gonna talk too much about finding your right shade and all that good stuff. I'm just gonna go right into contouring with it. For contouring, people generally like to use cooler tones or even neutral tones, but you use what you're comfortable with. Maybe you like your contour to be more warm than cool. The difference is that cool toned uh, bronzers and contour products actually create the shadows that you're looking for when you're trying to have your face chiseled, okay? You can just use whatever you're comfortable with. At the end of the day, this is a blending video, so colors I'm not really getting into. Before you even get to contouring, you need to understand your face shape. Do you have an oval face? Do you have a round face? Do you have a square face? Do you have a diamond? Well, do people have diamond shaped faces, girl? A heart shaped face? What is your face shape? Study it, learn it, and apply your contour um, shades according to that face shape. So using my MAC concealer, I'm gonna show you guys where I generally like to place my contour. So I place it here, right, at that hairline and I blend into the hairline. We'll get into blending in a second. And I actually want to focus just right here for a moment because since I'm explaining things, I don't want my contour product to start drying before I get to blend it. Now, to blend contour, you can use your, you could use a brush, which you guys know I love to use my MAC brush to blend my contour, or you can use a sponge. And so I'm going to show you guys both. For my forehead, I will use the sponge. For my cheek area, I will use the brush. So to blend this out, I'm definitely gonna use the back side of my beauty blender. My beauty blender is damp. I wet it before I got started. I'm simply going to take the beauty blender and I am going to literally just start pounding away at my forehead. And I'm not gonna stop, okay? I'm just gonna pound, pound, pound away at my forehead and as you see, it's starting to move and blend into that area. If you can't seem to get your beauty blender to, to blend properly into the actual hairline itself, which needs to happen, then you can go in with your brush after. And you just wanna go back and forth, back and forth until it is so cohesive or so well blended with your foundation that it looks like it's just naturally there. And you can start to pull it, or you can start to bounce your found your blender over onto your temples. So you're just pulling that product all the way out to where you like your contour to be, or the contour according to your face shape. Now, it is possible to blend away. You may blend too much. As you're blending, you have to be watching very carefully that, you not, that you're not blending too much, okay? You can be a blending queen, but you gotta know when to stop blending. Like for me, if I pull my mirror this close, I can't see where my contour begins and my foundation ends, and that is what you're looking for. You, that's where you wanna stop. If I blend any further, I'm not gonna be able to see my contour at all. And then once you do that, then you can move on to 
your cheeks. Now, my preference for blending out my contour on my cheeks is my MAC 130 brush. This is a really cute stippling brush. I'm going to apply a small amount of contour product because you don't want it to get muddy. And now I'm going to be flicking and blending upwards. And this is the motion that I generally contour in. The other thing you want to decide is how chiseled or how far down do you want your contour? Some people start their contour literally at the corner of their mouth and blend that way, but I don't like to do that. It's not my thing. And so I like to make sure that whatever I'm contouring does not go below the line that I initially drew. You can of course correct that later with concealer, but I prefer to create less work for myself. So that's not something that I'm into. Okay. And you just want to pull from that area, just like you started in the middle here and you brought it down to the sides. Now you're on the side here and you want to pull it up and blend it up into your hairline over on the sides. And of course, this is a really harsh line that has to go. So you have to be able to not only blend upwards, but you also have to be able to blend directly on that line without crossing that, that boundary. Okay, so as you see, this is not properly blended just yet, but you have to remember that I do not have concealer on. So that adding my concealer to the look is going to help that. And so sometimes, pretty much every time, I will contour like this and I'll blend it upward, but then I will still end up taking my beauty blender and just using it to fine tune. to really get rid of the harsh lines. Now the harsh lines are, um, you're gonna be able to pinpoint them until I actually do my concealer or my highlighting. So don't focus too much on that just yet. It will go. And so that's what she looks like for now. I'm gonna repeat the step on this side and then we're gonna move on to uh, contouring our nose. So again, we're just swirling our brush. I'm going counterclockwise and that doesn't change. On both sides, it's the same movement. The only difference is one side you're moving forward. On this side, I move backwards. Now you're not going to get this on the first try so, and that's totally fine. Makeup is something that you have to keep practicing. Trust me, I used to look a hot mess. <laughs> but practice definitely makes almost perfect. Now, of course you can do jaw contour, but I'm actually gonna wait to do my jaw right now. I'm gonna do my nose. I'm actually not gonna use this to contour my nose because this is way too dark a shade to contour my nose. So to contour my nose, I'm going to get another product. This is my Fenty Beauty Matchstick in Truffle. In my personal opinion, the nose contour is to me, one of the hardest things to master because it's very easy to mess it up. When contouring your nose, you want to focus on the sides of your nose, the bridge, basically. You want it to be pinched and snatched. <laughs> so, with nose contour, you want to go on both sides and as well as directly under your nose. Depending on what product you use, you're going to alter the next step. With the mash sticks, they're a little bit more on the dry side. So you have to figure out, do I want to use my beauty blender? Do I want to use a brush? Do I want to use my fingers? Personally, I'm going to use my fingers for this step because I feel like they work really well with the mash sticks. They help to warm up the product. 
And so I'm just using my finger and I'm blending that matchstick right into my nose. And I'm actually pulling the product downward and allowing it to sort of blend into the foundation that's on those sides of my nose. And so now that I've contoured my nose, I can clearly see exactly where my concealer needs to go, even though I already knew. There are actually people who, this is their look. They don't even do concealer. They just do foundation and contouring. But something always looks like it's missing if you do that. And so right now, we're going to head into concealing. Someone actually inquired about if I use this concealer or not. So I'm going to pull it out today instead of using my Fenty. This is my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. And I'm using the shade Amand or Almond. And now I am going to apply it to the areas that I need highlighted. I'm not going to complicate things for you guys today. I'm not going to use three different concealers. I'm just going to use the one concealer. Amand is like one of my exact matches, but my Amand is giving me all kinds of empty girl. I'm placing this concealer down, but I'm not really applying it all the way into the contour because when I blend, that's when it will go into the contour. Because I actually laid out my um, contour first and blended it out first, I actually want to use a concealer that is closer to my skin tone anyway, because it's going to make the blending from here into the contour more seamless because the contour shade that I use today is not the shade that I would normally use. It's a lot darker. I like a subtle contour. I'm not into something that's really out there. I don't like when people stare at me, okay? So, obviously, to blend concealer, you also have the option of using brushes. I wouldn't use my fingers for my concealer unless it was like a pot concealer. If it's like a cream concealer in a pot or a pan that you have to like dig into, then I would probably more likely use my fingers. But for a concealer like this, I would much rather use a beauty blender or a brush. Because this is not a full coverage concealer, I'm definitely going to opt to use my Beauty Blender. And I'm going to use this side right here. I was originally going to use this one because I love this one. Like, this one's a lot more squishy than this one. But I'm going to use this one today. Only just to keep things not so complicated because I don't want you guys to feel like you need, like, 10 different tools to do your face. So... Once um, the product is down, just like in the last video, you want to start blending on the outsides and you want to blend those, you want to blend that right into your contour. And again, you don't want to be able to tell where the concealer ends and the contour begins, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So I'm blending the outside first. And then blending up onto the nose contour. And make sure you get that crease by your nose. That's very important. And then I'm just going to look up. I'm doing very light patting or pressing motions to blend the concealer under my eyes. I don't want to do too much blending because this is not really a full coverage concealer. I want that concealer to stand out because I'm not using something that is heavier. So again, on the outsides, make sure you get that upper lip. And then we do nose or the sides of the nose. And then again, underneath the eye. And so if you feel like when you're blending this concealer up into your contour, you're losing your contour, just turn your beauty blender on the back side and revisit that area and start to blend it so that your contour is what's showing and not the concealer. And so for jawline, I'm going to go back into the Fenty Beauty. I'm going to trace my jawline out. I generally use my brush to... Blend out my jawline. 
And I think proper blending, I think if you time zone, like if you add a time to each section of your face, I know it sounds complicated, but it's better this way. <laughs> if you add a time, um, just mental notes of how long you want to spend blending or how long it takes to get the perfect amount of blend, that is uh, a really good strategy. So say somewhere like my forehead, I'll say it needs to be blended for at least three minutes. And that's just a, a guesstimate. Cheeks, I would probably say, is more like four to five minutes of blending, depending on what tool you're using as well. If you just do a mental note of time, then your face will slowly come together and be as flawless as you want it to be because allotted time periods for the forehead, the cheek, the jaw, you know, and that ensures as well that you've completely blended out the spots or the zones that you need to be blended. Like on my jawline, I would probably say I would spend two minutes on there. Now, of course, it doesn't end here. We now need to head into the powder thing. Should we do Fenty powder? I feel like I haven't used my Fenty powder in a long time. So this is my Fenty Beauty powder in hazelnut. Now, based on my look, I don't necessarily want to do any baking. So this is the perfect powder because it's not a powder that I generally would bake with. It's definitely more of an all over face powder. I've dusted off the excess. Oh, I forgot how good this smells. <laughs> and so one thing I have to point out is when I have ever watched a tutorial, something that I notice is that people will blend their foundation down onto their neck, but then they don't set the foundation on their neck. They only set the foundation on their face, which to me makes no sense. So I always make sure that I just have a little bit of setting powder down here. So this is definitely like a, very light wear, everyday type of makeup look. This is the I'm running out the house look, not the uh, I have an event to go to look. The technique is definitely one you can still use, but you would just use heavier products with the same technique. This is more so about blending. And everything needs to be blended, even your powders. So, with this powder, I'm simply sweeping it onto my face and setting my whole face with it. And then I'll be able to go in now with my contour powders. If you want longer lasting makeup, you can of course go in over what you just set and um, use a translucent powder, especially under the eyes. I definitely get creasing under my eyes, so it is better for me to actually spend time sitting there pressing powder into my skin, but I don't really feel like doing that today, so I'm not. And now we can move on to now setting our powder contour, or not even setting it, but reviving what we laid down with the cream. So I'm going in with my Fenty Beauty bronzer in Coconati. I actually use both Coconati and what's the other one? There's a darker one. Um, I can't remember what it's called. I use both, but I'm just going to use Coconati today. And I taught you guys my technique in the last one. I pat, 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 and then I blend. And when you cream contour first, your product is already laid down, so you're not really trying to contour when you're adding the powder to your face. You're simply, um, you're simply just setting or reviving it, making it really stand out. And then I switched to my 180 Fenty brush to contour my nose. And it's just a patting motion I like to use here as well. I changed my mind. I'm going to set under my eyes with my Laura Mercier. So I'm just using this as a way to um, ensure my makeup. <laughs> and while that's doing what it's doing, I'm going to quickly throw my brows on. <laughs> I said that like they're a wig. <laughs> My eyebrow technique changes every day, so ignore me. 
Today I'm starting up top when usually that's not what I do. I'm gonna take my NYX blush in Double Dare. It's very blurry, I'm not fixing it because that would require me moving. <laughs> And I'm not going to move again, okay? I had to move for literally every time I showed a product, I had to get up. So I wasn't about to. Y'all can take the blurriness, okay? It's very, very orange. And we're just adding that nice orange peachiness to the face, to the cheeks. Okay, it's a great way to put some color back into your face if you have turned yourself into a gray mess. <laughs> that is not what I did. I'm just saying you might be turning yourself into a gray mess. You need to add some color to your life. Okay, Bride of Frankenstein. Is she green? Is Bride of Frankenstein green? And for highlight, we're gonna reach into Fenty. <laughs> we're gonna go with Girl Next Door, which is the color over here, the lighter color, so this one. I generally don't use Girl Next Door. I almost use every single time Chic Freak. But we wanted to go a little more subtle today on the highlight because we were already glowing. You know, we didn't want to blind people. <laughs> we didn't want to blind people with our natural glow mixed with the highlight. So we got to slow it down some and just use Girl Next Door because we are the Girl Next Door, okay? Little on the nosy nose, little on the forehead. Okay, we are loving the face now. This is the point where you decide if you are going to just put your lashes on or mascara, a wing liner, you know, maybe a one shadow kind of look. Girl, I thought I was recording. <laughs> I'm gonna line my lips now. Obviously, I'm gonna go with a nude lip, so I'm taking Single by Fenty Beauty, and I'm gonna top that off with my Chai Lip Gloss. And so that is the finished look. I hope you guys feel like you learned something. I hope that you guys will be able to apply these blending techniques to your personal routine. And yeah, God bless you all. I love you all so much. And I'll definitely see you in the next one.